Oh, we've got only 8 amps outside. Under 1 kilowatt. I wonder what the hell is... Jeez, what is... Look at this mush sky. That is not good. It is, it is even raining. What better can we do than going into the off-cut garage and doing some do-it-yourself work? I'm just glad we are on 77% state of charge. And that's exactly what the battery is for, right? If you have a day like this and there's no solar coming in, well, you got enough solar energy stored in your batteries. And um, I guess even our tilt system is not doing great today. See, from here it looks like our tilt system is not doing much. We are discharging our battery with 244 watts. Pool pump is running and the tilt system is not able to produce that much power. So we need additional 244 watts from our battery. But um, how much exactly is the tilt system producing now? Well, we know the website, the Solar Man website, where we can see the production of the tilt system. It's not great because the inverter reports the data only every five minutes to this website. Whatever the website shows you is not accurate. It is always out of date. And I really want to see how much is our tilt system producing right now. And thankfully the electrician was there last week and connected all my outlets, all my switches, all my security stuff here. And we now have the micro inverter plugged into this outlet here. We've got a 10 amp breaker and RCD in there, a main switch. He is getting me a watertight plug which actually screws into this um, socket here. Anyway, we have now everything connected here and um, we have also installed the Shelly 1PM plus P MP MP1 plus what it says here it's like a little micro switch so I can remotely turn off and on the micro inverter if I have to and this Shelly switch also measures the power production of our inverter now so here we can see the two Shelly devices I have there is the energy meter which measures my whole property and next to it is now the pool solar switch and it shows us we are producing 73 watts at the moment from our tilt system 73 watts only and this is obviously being consumed directly by the pool pump and all the additional power needs to be supplied by our multi plus here from our battery system the vrm shows us uh, 390 watts at the moment plus the 73 from our tilt system is our overall ac consumption at the moment but now as i told you before this production of the tilt system is not showing up in our production here on the Victron VIM. See all this um, solar production 4.8 kilowatt hours for today does not include what is coming from the tilt system. And this is exactly what we want to change today. And this was my idea from the beginning to install this Shelly switch because this integrates fairly easy into the Victron system and it also integrates natively in Home Assistant. We've got the solar power production here from our off-grid system and below that we can see the pool solar power production of 85 watts now. This is basically reading the information from the Shelly switch natively. There's nothing you need to do. Once the Shelly switch is connected to your Wi-Fi into your network, Home Assistant will pick this up automatically and provides you with all these information. So the only problem now is how do we get this information into the Victron system so it actually, so it actually shows up below here and adds to our solar production during the day. Because at the moment it doesn't count for this additional power coming in and charging the battery. The state of charge of course is rising and it shows the amps going into the battery but it doesn't show any solar production. It doesn't know where this energy is coming from. There could be a non-Victron DC charger we have connected to the system. The VRM just doesn't know where this energy is coming from. And in today's video, we want to try and integrate this Shelly switch into the Victron system. And because there are so many smart people out there, there is of course a solution which easily integrates these Shelly switches into your Victron system and shows them as an additional solar charger and solar inverter. 
And at this early point, I want to thank Igor from the Netherlands who has sent me an email. And he was actually suggesting not to use a Shelly switch, but read the information directly from the micro inverter and then add them to Home Assistant or to the Victron system. While this is possible and there are solutions out there where you can tap into this microinverter directly, read the information and put them in Home Assistant, I could not find an easy solution where we could actually do the same with a Victron system. And Igor is very determined in finding a solution for that. He actually set up a virtual Venus OS system and followed all kinds of links and solutions he found on GitHub to make this actually work. And from the emails he has sent me now, I think he was actually successful and has done it now, or maybe almost, but it requires a bit of scripting and MQTT magic, however this all works. And once he figures this all out, I'm more than happy to show you his solution as well to tap directly into the microinverter and read this information as well. But I don't have any MQTT stuff set up here, neither do I know how to script all this and put this all together so it works and gives us all the right information and then integrates this all into Victron. I have no idea. So hence the initial idea to do all this with a Shelly switch because this one, as I said, integrates natively into Home Assistant. We've got all the information already in Home Assistant now. I can easily monitor it from wherever I am. And there's also another wonderful and beautiful person out there who has come up with a very easy solution to integrate the Shelly switch into the Victron system. And in today's video, we wanna follow his instructions and get this done and see if it works. And Martin from Austria, not Australia. Martin was so kind to put all this information together. He did several YouTube videos as well and added all the information to his GitHub website, which I will link down below as well, of course. So all the credit, how this all works together goes to Martin in Austria. He has figured this out. He has done all the scripting and we just need to copy and paste this again into our Victron system. And hopefully it just works. And we have used such solutions before to modify our Victron system with a shutdown function, for example, or with the um, or with the modifications. So it shows us actually here temperatures and also gives us more information if we click on one of these tiles. So I'm really, really grateful that we have these people in our community, which are sharing all their knowledge. And we as the consumers, we can just grab these ready solutions, put them in our system and it works. So without further to do, Let's get started. All right, first of all, we need to make sure we have super user access to our Victron system. So you go into your settings, go into general, make sure you are super user and also have the root password set. If you don't know how to do this, I link this down below under the video, very easy. We now need to log in to our Victron system via PuTTY. This is a free software you can download. I link this down below as well. It looks like this. You type in the IP address of your Victron system. And by the way, this can be either your Raspberry Pi, as in our case here, or it can be the Victron Servo GX or a color control system, whatever runs Venus OS. This solution will work for any of these devices. We click on open. We log in as root with the password we have set in the Venus OS before. And now we are logged in. So in the next step, we need to go to Martin's GitHub website. And here we can see the DBus Shelly 1PM PV inverter and Shelly PM1 Plus multi instance. That sounds all very complicated, but it's not. It's really not. He has also linked both of his videos with instructions in German on his GitHub website. So here he explains everything we are going to do and how it will look like in our Victron VRM system. And then we come to the installation and configuration. So this was a bit confusing at the beginning because he's got so many scripts in here, but these different scripts are only necessary if you have more than one inverter you want to include in the Venus OS system. So you use, you use the first script for your first inverter. And if you have another one, you use the second one and the third one for a third one and so on. So you can run multiple instances of this script on your Venus OS system. So what the script here does is it downloads a package from his GitHub website. It unzips it, it moves it to a folder, it sets the permissions, it runs the installer, and then it removes the downloaded zip file again. And these are all commands we need to run one after another, or we can conveniently click on this copy button here in the top right hand corner. It says copied. 
we go back into our remote console where we have logged in already. We do a right click and it does it all automatically for us. Once it's done, you just press the enter button and it is done. It is now installed in our Venus OS system. And there's only one last step necessary to make it work. We need to change the configuration any file here on our system, which is uh, very easy. It's very easy to do. So let's go back to the website and scroll a bit further, further down. And it says it actually here, change config any. We will just copy this path here. This is for our first inverter. Copy. So with this path copied, we go back and we type in nano, which is the text editor of Linux, and then do a right click, click enter. And we can now see the ini file. These are only these few lines which make up the configuration file for your inverter setting. And what you need to change is all explained on his website, but I will show this here in the video as well. There are only a few things we need to change. We want to change the custom name. We want to call this one Pool Solar. You can set here which face this inverter is sitting on your system, L1, L2 or L3. So I leave this as L1. I only have L1 here. It's a single face system. If you have the plus PM switch from Shelly, you leave this one here on true. And the only other thing we need to change here is the IP address of our Shelly switch. Where do you get this? Well, you go into your Shelly app on your mobile phone. You click on the Shelly 1PM Plus. You go all the way down to settings and click on device information. And here we have all the information like MAC address and also the device IP address 10.0.0.2.2.1. So we change this one to 10.0.0.2.2.1. One. If you have set a password on your Shelly switch, which you probably should for security reasons, you need to fill out the next two lines as well. The username is only admin, and then you enter your password down here, whatever you have set in your Shelly. And because I'm a lazy bastard, I haven't set a password in my Shelly yet. So I leave both username and password field free. One more thing for this config file here. There is an important setting up here, which is called the device instance. This is something you need to set. It sits on 44 or any other number, whatever he puts in there as a placeholder. This is the identifier instance in the Victron system. And there can only be one device with the instance 44. So you need to make sure the number 44 is not already taken in your system. How do you check this? Easy. The easiest way to check is in the Victron VIM. You click on device list. And here we can see all the devices I have connected to my Victron system. If you click on any of these devices, it gives you the VIM instance. And this one, this March on, for example, has the 288. So this is not 44, which is great. This MPPT has 290, great. This inverter is 294, great. So you go through all your devices quickly and check what kind of ID they have. So in this case, 44 is fine because none of my devices has got the 44. And this is pretty much everything you need to change here in this config file. To save the file with all our changes we have just made, we press F2 on the keyboard and then enter Y for yes. Hit enter again and we have saved it. The only thing we need to do now is do a reboot. So the script can actually start running as a service in our Venus OS system. We can leave the remote window and can go back to our dashboard here and just wait for the Rust P to come back to life. And hopefully we will see another window here with a PV inverter. And there we go, after a refresh of the website, we can see we have a PV inverter showing up here. It's actually the Fronius. Why is the Fronius showing up here? Well, this is certainly not correct, but we can see here, if I go back to my Shelly software on the mobile phone, we've got the 424. Yeah, depending on the reception here in the garage of my mobile phone, 
This one here in the VIM is actually more precise because it communicates with the Shelly switch on a local base. So, and basically, there you have it. We can now see our solar production of our MPPT solar charge controllers here in the garage, carport and big shed. And up here we can see the micro inverter system from our till system on top of the house, which feeds in power to our pool system now. We can see we are still using 55 watts more than the actual inverter produces. Is the sun coming back? Looks like the AC load is going down here. So we should see the animation actually going backwards and feeding energy back into our multi plus at some stage. It is now on zero. So we're basically using all this energy here as our AC loads at the moment. Okay, we can see we are just charging into the battery 62 watts now coming from our tilt system basically so all the 600 watts we are producing here i'm using at the moment as an ac load there's the pool pump running there's something else running on it the computer is running the lights are on so all this and there's the pump kicking, kicking in now but now we can actually exactly see how much power our tilt system produces and also further down here, this will now contribute to our solar production. So whatever you see here, when we have 2.32 kilowatt hours produced, this is then MPPT power from our off-grid system here, plus the power coming from the till system and our micro inverter. And if we ever install another inverter, we can just use the second portion of his script here and install another instance. Change the configuration for this second instance as well and a second PV inverter will show up here in the VIM. How good is that? Oh, I want to show you the remote console as well. Yeah, there it is, there it is. There's our PV inverter, it's connected to the Multi Plus. And here's our PV charger, which is our DC charging from the garage. So you've got all your, all your charges up here, temperatures down here, AC loads, DC system, and the battery state of charge. Incredible! Can I even click on this one? Oh, I can. Okay, it doesn't give me too much information here. The car has woken up. I guess there's a new software update coming. Yep, there it is. By the way, I have got my Tesla referral code down in the description under each video. And thank you so much for all these 16 incredible people who have used it and bought a Tesla with my link. So thank you very much for that. We both benefit from it. And we also benefit from these incredible people like Martin from Austria who put all this together for us, published this on his GitHub website, free to use for everyone. So thank you very much, Martin. I'll link his channel and his GitHub website and all the information down below, as well as on my website, to Pool Solar. There it is, Pool Solar. It shows up as a separate device. If we go in there, so it shows us actually the voltage and also the current on our L1 phase. The microinverter is pushing into our off-grid system. And we can also see we have already produced 29.3 kilowatt hours since the installation of the Shelly switch in this box. And you can very easily read all this information here through Home Assistant and present them in a the dashboard for you. It is a native integration into Home Assistant. There's no scripting. There's nothing you need to do. As soon as you connect the Shelly switch to your Wi-Fi network, Home Assistant picks it up and integrates it automatically. So thank you again to Martin from Austria and also to Igor from the Netherlands for, for helping me out, providing these solutions for you here. I just grab all these information they have developed and put this here in a video for you. But all the credit goes to these incredible persons. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support to all these wonderful and beautiful people out there who have donated to the channel, keeping this all alive here and buying me a beer from time to time. Thank you so much to everyone who is actually donating on a regular base now. It really makes a difference and is a big help in making these videos here. Guys, until the next video in one or two days, when we have a look at an incredible battery I want to show you. But this battery has everything we always wanted. And of course, I want to show you this here on the channel and see what you think. Until then, guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye.